So now what I want to try is, since we have the charger hooked up, what if we just bump up the voltage to 15? You know, we'll keep the alternator unplugged. We'll set this. Let's see, stop. So let's bump this up. It's really nice that you can set it to a tenth of a volt. Let's do 14.8. Okay. 50 amps max. Start it. So I set the maximum current to 50 so it doesn't cook the battery or anything. Um, let's see how it runs at 14.8 volts. So I have this saved. Let's roll the scope again. Not great. It's running crabby. Let's turn the charger off. It runs better instantly. Fourteen point two, fourteen point three, fourteen point four. Okay, so runs crappy when the battery voltage is at 14 volts, 14.8, instantly better. That's pretty amazing, I like this car. All right, so we're getting down to the wire here. Uh, what's the pulse duration of these ignition coil ramps? So, delta, about four milliseconds. Now let's see good versus bad. So right here it's running fine, and you can still see there's a variation. One, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I don't like that. Well, why are they different? Let's measure the the actual um, duration here of these ramps, you know, approximate, they should all be about the same. Seven milliseconds. Seven milliseconds. Seven milliseconds. Now, when we bump up the charger voltage. Let's measure these right here. Are these are these coils having enough time to actually charge up? Only 4 milliseconds. What about this one? Five milliseconds. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? So, what I want to do is put a um, a channel on. See, only less than four milliseconds. That's not enough time to charge up that coil. I want to put a channel at the engine computer on one of the coil control wires, and see how that varies as we ramp up the voltage from twelve to fourteen or fifteen. I've never seen anything like this. Why would the computer ramp the coils different, um, you know, vary the pulse width there? That's why the current is less and less because the pulse width is less so the current doesn't have enough or the coil doesn't have enough time to charge up 
to make the, a good spark. Eventually we're losing spark on two out of four cylinders. This is a really neat case study. All right, so I was looking at the data a little more carefully and I don't think there's anything wrong with our control pulse. So this is where the charger was at 15 volts. This is where I unhooked the charger and it was back down to 13 or so. So let's take a look at these current ramps and on the ground that we have connected at ignition coil number uh, one, I guess, you can see the current ramps right there. So the voltage goes up to about you know 150 millivolts. That's still a good ground, but if it's loaded, you can see a little bit of a voltage rise. So the car's running fine. Let's measure uh, the actual pulse width of these ramps. Now what I did here was I activated filtering. So if there's no filtering, it looks like this. But I want to get rid of the higher frequency, you know, whatever is drawing higher frequency um, current. So we'll just, you know, knock that down to we do 200 hertz. Looks nice and smooth now, right? Just a trick with the scope. Now, let's measure the pulse widths of these coil ramps while the car is running well. So we can see they correspond to that voltage rise on the ground. So about 5 milliseconds, right? That's what we got before. Again, if you measure the whole ramp, yeah, about 5 milliseconds, and then it goes up. Now, here where the voltage is higher, you can see there's almost no loading going on of that ground and the current is almost zero. There's one coil that's still still trying to do its best. So let's see, one, two, three, four. So this one here that has a lower voltage drop on the ground is still drawing some current but somehow it's not being noticed on that ground even though all of our coils all four of them should be grounded on the same spot one let's see oh, where are we here there we go one two three four they should all be grounded on GE1 on top left of engine now if we're on coil number Two left side of engine we're measuring right here ah okay so does that make sense if this is passing a lot of current I mean it should all be the same voltage no matter which coil is pulsing but anyways let's measure the pulse width here where the current almost drops to zero I'll measure the good, the one good pulse. It's it's about the same, about five milliseconds. So I don't think there's anything wrong with the control pulse coming from the engine computer. So I want to do one more scope capture. We'll put one lead. You know the CKP we don't really need. That's fine. Or the second channel. I want to put one channel on battery voltage on the system voltage so we know when we ramp up the charger and the other channel I want to put on the coil control wire so right now we're measuring coil ground I want to measure the pulse width coming from the engine computer to the coil so we could easily do that just move this channel over a few pins and one more scope capture and what's the final verdict? It looks like if the computer is commanding the coils exactly the same, but we're dropping out spark and coil current when the voltage rises from 12 to 14, that tells me these aftermarket coils are garbage. Garbage. 
probably eBay cheap whatever Amazon special now I do have a set I think of coils from a 2003 WRX I don't know if they're a direct replacement I'll have to check but right now it's looking like bad aftermarket ignition coils all right last experiment before we condemn these ignition coils so I moved two channels around channel A is now just battery positive voltage at the DLC on pin 16 and then channel 2 I moved from the CKP ground to ignition coil to ECM control that's pin 17 over there at the engine computer so everything zeroed out the other two channels are the same let's run it so first I'm going to start up the charger is disabled so it's running we're at 12 volts now let's turn on the charger to 14.5 there you go 14.5 Okay, and turn it off. Amazing. Okay. So let's uh, save this capture, it's five screens, and make sure our pulse width on the ignition coil didn't change. Okay, here we go. So this is when it was running well. You see the voltage is at 12 volts, and here's where I turned on the charger and it started running really crappy. So I'm interested in the actual control pulse width. You see there's the coil ramp, there's the... Um, duration of uh, the computer energizing this coil about five and a half milliseconds okay now I don't know why there's a little noise so let's go to here do the same measurement Four and a half milliseconds. Four point two instead of five point six. <laughs> Is that enough of a difference? I mean, it was running a lot worse. Here it's running better. Again, I unhooked the charger. Let's measure a ramp right here. About 4.6. And when it was running really crappy, exactly the same 4.6 so about five milliseconds all right that's I think that's it I don't know what this crap is I don't think that's supposed to happen um, that's a Pico glitch but regardless maybe if you're using four channels I don't I really don't know well, that's it. These ignition coils are junk. Let me see if I have some spare ones in stock. Well, I have two coils in stock from a 2003 Subaru WRX that blew up at 205,000 miles. We'll see if these the part numbers are a little different. If these don't work, we'll have to get replacement coils. But let's pop the battery out. Let's see if we get that coil out. All right, so here is the mystery coil, and it looks identical to 
the one I have in stock. So let's plug her in. See if this car runs any different. I might as well replace both of these right now. So we might get two cylinders back online. All right, moment of truth. Two coils on the left bank replaced with OEMs. Charger is off. That's a Subaru thing if battery is disconnected. All right, here we go. Bump this up to 14.5. Fourteen point five. Hey, it's running better. It's running better for sure. And let's shut the charger off. Now the other bank kicked in. We're done. Shitty ignition coils for the win. This is fantastic. So, I can smell that raw gas. So right here, everything's going great. And look at how much more current cylinders two and four are drawing. Right there. Now, let's go to right here. Okay, so this is when everything's happy. So you see the current basically doubled. These are the good coils right here. So two and four. And when it was running really crappy, the current on two and four is still really good. So we can, let's turn on the filtering right around there. So let's measure, so that's about 10 amp peak at high voltage and also 10 amp peak at, you know, slightly lower voltage. And look what happens to the aftermarket coils. You know, they, they come back to, um, maybe six amps, but when the voltage is high, they're completely, <laughs> there was like almost no amperage at all. So that's the diagnosis for the rough running with the plugged in alternator. I've never seen this before. So this, these ignition coils, these aftermarket junk units, you raise the voltage two volts from 12 to 14, you lose spark. They stop drawing current. So whatever circuitry is inside that coil is obviously not OEM spec. And unfortunately, I only have two of those WRX coils in stock. So I should have kept the other two from the junk engine. I just threw them out because, like, oh, who needs four coils? <laughs> well, I guess that this in this case, the car would have been fixed with only spare parts from an old Subaru. But I'll get four OEM coils for this thing. And... No eBay, no Amazon, OEM. Um, we could try standard motor products of some name brand, but not Chineseium garbage. Um, for bonus footage, we'll, we could check this parasitic draw, see what's going on there. But uh, that's it for the diagnosis. Thanks all for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.